Now we're going to move to the feed accelerator. With the feed accelerators on S-Series machines, there are three different kits that are available. This machine that we're looking at today has a standard feed accelerator kit. You can also get a high speed and a low speed kit as well. In our area, majority of the machines are gonna have a standard speed. The other one that's very common is your low speed. To tell the difference, if you have, to find out what you have, is if you look at the V-belt that's driving this, is the standard speed is gonna be a three rib V-belt, where your low speed is gonna be a two rib. The difference between the two of them is mainly on the low side. You still have a high and a low speed setting with each, with each option. Um, but what happens is your high side is the same RPM, whether you have the low speed kit or the standard speed kit, where you get the benefits is on your low side. The low side, it does turn slower. Um, if you were to read in the operator's manual or sales literature, it's going to say that the low speed is recommended for edible beans, uh, popcorn, things like that. Um, we have found that that low speed kit also works very well in just field corn. Um, using that and having that low speed kit on the machine and you could also go a couple steps further and do a couple different uh, feed accelerator paddle options you can really decrease the amount of damaged grain that you have um, a lot of guys that have switched from a standard speed to a low speed will say at their dryer pile or the bin sites their amount of fines are more than half when you're talking about like theory of operation we talked about the feeder house chain speed and the feed accelerator. Just keep those in mind if you do think about switching kits. If you're running a standard speed and you wanna to switch to low speed, don't forget about the feeder house chain when you slow everything down just to keep that consistent crop flow. You're always gonna have this high-low adjustment. Your tensioning handle's right here, so you take that off. You move the belt to either side of the pulley, depending on if you wanna run fast or slow for your kit. But if you want to slow that slow speed down even more, you can certainly do that with the slow speed. Just remember your feeder house chain speed when you do that. Another thing to add on the feed accelerator speeds. So if you recently traded a machine or you're not sure what uh, belt, what system you have, that belt, like I mentioned earlier, is different between a standard and a low speed. So if you call in and <clears throat> have somebody set a belt out for you or you order a belt, uh, verify to make sure it's the correct one. Uh, the belt you might have hanging in your shed might be different than the one on the machine because your machine might have a different feed accelerator option. The biggest thing, like I said, is walk back to it. If it's a three rib belt, the standard speed. If it's a two rib belt, then it's the low speed. So in combination with that, you've got the speed adjustment on the feed accelerator. You've also got three different paddle options. So the paddles that you see on this drum are gonna be typically what your machine comes with from the factory. It's a straight, would you call it a, a ribbed paddle? Like a sawtooth. So that's gonna be standard. If you wanna increase that grain quality, you could go to what's called a swept back paddle, where it'll still be that sawtooth, but there'll be a little bit of an angle backwards to be a little bit gentler on that crop coming in. Alternatively, some guys prefer the smooth paddle where there's no saw teeth in it at all. It's just a, a flat, straight paddle. My, per, my personal uh, combination that I like the best is, especially in corn, if, if you're doing a lot of drier corn, uh, you have a lot of corn that's tested in 13, 13, 15 percent. It seems that low speed feed accelerator kit swipe back uh, feed accelerator paddles will get your get you your most optimal grain quality uh, the amount of damage even in soybeans i've noticed if you get in some really dry soybeans that are below nine percent um, flipping that over to slow and having those swipe backs you'll have a lot a lot less uh, splits in there a lot of times when you're looking in your sample and you're seeing damaged grain your first go-to is to, okay, I have my concaves too tight. Um, am I running too much through my returns? Things like that. A lot of times this feed accelerator gets overlooked. So a good chunk of that damage could be coming from the feed accelerator and not from any of the threshing components in the machine. So uh, long story short, don't overlook the feed accelerator. 
And one other thing to add, if we're thinking about longevity of your machine, if you're owning your machine for several years, uh, one differentiating factor between regular, swept back, or the flat paddles, well, remember, the paddles we're looking at here, as well as the flat paddles, they can be flipped over when they start to wear. So that gets you a fresh, sharp edge. You don't have to buy any more parts, just flip them over, and you're good for, for a while. The swept back, you won't be able to do that because of that angle on them, you'll have to replace those. Um, but those three options are there. Again, enhance your grain quality and optimize the performance of your machine just with messing with your drive and messing with the paddles on your feed accelerator. And also with the swipe backs, if you are in really tough crop conditions, you could have some feeding issues because that swipe back isn't aggressive. So it's not going to grab that material as good as what it would with a regular serrated uh, sawtooth paddle or the smooth paddle as well.